One of the striking features of human female reproduction is menstruation. It's uncomfortable, it's sometimes painful. Why did it evolve? There are four hypotheses. One is that it evolved to eliminate parasites introduced with copulation, it evolved to save energy, or it may have evolved to protect the uterus from inflammation or as a byproduct of maternal fetal conflict. Here are those major hypotheses sketched out in a bit more detail, and I'd like to make a few comments about them. The first one is that menstruation evolved to get rid of pathogens that were brought in with a sperm. And so the claim is that it's protecting the uterus against colonization by pathogens. The problem is that menstruation occurs weeks after copulation, and this problem of having sperm-borne pathogens is not unique to species that menstruate. There are many species that don't menstruate that would have the same problem. A second idea is that menstruating conserves energy and that menstruation and resorption is energetically less costly than maintaining a differentiated endometrium. However, maintaining a differentiated endometrium is not the alternative in other species. It also would not allow for ovulation or sperm transport or sperm capacitation. So a third hypothesis is that menstruation is actually not adaptive. It is a consequence of spontaneous decidualization. So the real issue then becomes spontaneous decidualization, and we'll go into that in a minute to explain exactly what that is. Now that is consistent with known, con known consequences of decidualization. And uh, in the paper we're relying on, on, this is the argument that the authors were making. So the problem then is to explain why decidualization became spontaneous. A fourth possibility is that the uterus is being preconditioned by menstruation, and that is protecting uterine tissues from hyperinflammation and from oxidative stress that are associated with deep placentation in humans, with the deep, deep invasiveness of placentation. So this claim ignores why menstruation may have evolved in ancestral primate species and in menstruating non-primates that don't have the deep invasion. And it may ignore the benefits that spontaneous decidualization might provide. So what we're going to do is we're going to really focus on spontaneous decidualization. First, a bit of a refresher on the human menstrual cycle. It has a follicular phase and a luteal phase in the ovary. During the follicular phase, the follicles mature. During the luteal phase, the corpus luteum is secreting progesterone. What that does in the uterus is that in the proliferative phase, the superficial endometrium is shed and proliferation begins. Then in the luteal phase, that's the secretory phase where the endometrium continues to, deliver, to differentiate and proliferate. The hormone levels in the follicular phase are dominated by estradiol and in the luteal phase by progesterone. Menstruation starts on day one, so that's the follicular phase. Ovulation occurs on day 14, and then decidualization begins. So decidualization is the transformation of the endometrium stimulated by progesterone under maternal control to prepare it to receive the implanting embryo. When progesterone is withdrawn, the differentiated endometrial stromal cells undergo apoptosis, and that leads to menstruation. We know that menstruation evolved three times. It's indicated here in red, and that includes the primates over here, some bats, and interestingly, the elephant shrews. So other things that menstruate include chimpanzees and gibbons and uh, orangutans and macaques and some of the monkeys, as well as several bats and the elephant shrew. What features do these organisms share? 
They all have spontaneous decidualization. They have invasive hemochorial placentation. They have extended mating periods. They have spontaneous ovulation. That means ovulation which is not induced by mating itself. And they have one or two well-developed offspring per pregnancy. So they have a few well-developed, relatively large offspring per pregnancy. So the three groups in which menstruation occurs all have hemochorial placentas. Menstruation is here in red. So here is uh, the elephant shrew. Here are humans. And here are the free-tailed bats. Okay, so they all have hemochorial placentas, highly invasive placentas. The real issue appears to be spontaneous decidualization. So in mammals that don't menstruate, decidualization occurs when the embryo implants. In mammals that menstruate, decidualization is spontaneous. That means that it's under maternal control and it occurs independently of the presence of an embryo. So why did it evolve? Well, one hypothesis is that it's a maternal response that protects the mother from the invasive embryo. Another hypothesis is that it's a mechanism that allows the mother to discard defective embryos. These are not mutually exclusive. So if you have spontaneous decidualization and menstruation, it is one way of flushing a defective embryo out of the female reproductive tract. We know that there are other features of quality control built into the female reproductive tract. There is atresia and there's spontaneous abortion. Ocytic atresia starts about the third month of pregnancy. At that point, there are about seven million oocytes in the newly formed ovaries. By birth, there are about a million. By menarche, about a thousand. And by menopause, there are nearly none left. So atresia does seem to target both nuclear and mitochondrial mutations, and it appears that there's at least a tendency for the damaged eggs to be eliminated and the less damaged eggs to be kept. Spontaneous abortions or miscarriages uh, are relatively frequent. Estimates of the proportion of pregnancies that end in early unrecognized abortion range from 30 to 75 percent. Clinically recognized pregnancies carry, uh, miscarry in about 10 to 20 percent of cases, most of which have chromosomal abnormalities. About 70 percent of gestations diagnosed with ultrasound as twins are singletons when they are delivered. So in all of these cases, there is some kind of selection that's going on in the reproductive tract prior to birth. Spontaneous abortion may function to both eliminate defective embryos and to reduce the reproductive cost of twins. So to summarize, menstruation evolved at least three times in mammals, always in lineages that have invasive placentation. It appears to be a byproduct of adaptations to protect the mother in fetal maternal conflict. It may also have evolved as a quality control mechanism. And the key mechanism is decidualization that is spontaneous rather than triggered by mating.